You ready to do this, Father? Can I see your eyes just for a brief second? No. <laughs> I am so ready for this. So ready. Good talk. I haven't done this before. Alright, let's do this, Gary. Next on Got stage us. is someone who comes from the Doge camp. The do only good everyday camp. Hailing from the stars. And then Vancouver, Canada. It's the one, the only, Gary Lachance. No Are we on? Yes. We're supposed to have the NFL music playing, but that's my best imitation. Take it away, Gary. Hello there. Comrades, thank you for joining us on this historic afternoon. My objective today is to proffer conscious decentralization as an idea whose time has come to pitch this bold new revolution as an acceptance movement, not a resistance, and to awaken as many as possible to the notion that we now have the tools to build a completely new world. One which will unite rather than divide, empower rather than exploit, and forever maximize freedom, creation, and loving connection. For the purposes of today, we define decentralization as the decentralization of power. In the beginning, decentralized tribes lived in harmony with nature and according to their own light. With the dawn of agriculture came the rise of cities and the need for centralized power structures to govern, police, and provide services. While this had many benefits, it was also not without dire physical and spiritual consequences. All social operating systems were based on coercion rather than inspiration. Power became increasingly centralized in the hands of the few, and warfare, depression, and dissociation were rampant. Peak centralization was reached in the 20th century, the most violent and destructive in all human history. But then, with the advent of the internet, and then the blockchain, which will unlock its true power and promise, the modern decentralization revolution began. The possibility of creating globally networked, peer-to-peer -peer societies is now before us. And it is my belief that our spiritual salvation depends upon it. Open source advances require no political coercion or argument. We simply build the new and route around the institutions we deem illegitimate. We lead by inspiration and become the change we want to see. But alongside the technical revolution, an evolution in consciousness will also be essential. Centralized power structures have left us divided, fearful, and disillusioned, endlessly bickering and competing rather than cooperating. We must recognize that we're all on the same team and now possess the technology required to make teamwork possible on an interstellar scale. Bye, Doge. Our fight is not against each other. Our fight is against the notion that we don't have the power to come together right now and build the world we deserve to live in. It's time to align and conquer, to rally change from within, to be excellent to one another, to embrace Doge consciousness and build a civilization that will be the envy of all the cosmos. So, my name is Gary. And this is a talk called Scaling Spirituality from Ecosystems to Ecosystems. First, I would like to thank Miami Crypto Experience, Kyle Kemper, and everyone who has helped me along this journey to unify the world. DDP friends and family, and all of you for being here, hopefully helping to build a new world. 
So, I'm someone who's always been a bit of an armchair anthropologist, someone curious who's tried to understand how the world works and how it could work better. In my mind, if you're looking at everything going on for quite a while, I believe that the root of the problems is hierarchical, highly centralized systems that breed dissociation, depression, and living in disharmony with our nature, with nature and our own natures. Systems that condition us to submit to our egos or the egos of others. The solution, I believe, is social operating systems that will maximize freedom, creation, and loving connection. This stuff is meaningful to me because I love freedom and seeing human creativity unleashed. I know that a better world is possible. Would you like to see that? A world that works for everyone. Yes. Yes. The answer is yes. I believe that the key is decentralization, which I personally define as the decentralization of power. Working towards a world where power structures are decentralized to the greatest degree possible and societies are no longer governed by force. Right now, the world is dominated by centralized banks, media, education, agriculture, etc. These are all force-based institutions that rely on patents, copyrights, and laws to maintain their power and relevance. Power is consistently concentrated in the hands of the few, which results in endless collusion and corruption. The 1% of the 1% running the show. Every four years, we're asked to vote for change, but fundamentally, not much ever really seems to change. So in analyzing this, I was always focused on what is the root of the problem? How do we strike the root? And I was very taken by the quote, for every thousand hacking at the branches of tyranny, there is one striking the root. This is why it was so exciting for me to discover Bitcoin in 2011 and see it as the fundamental key to creating a decentralized world, finally. Not much time today to get into the fundamentals of Bitcoin, but it was the initial coin, and then along came Ethereum, everyone's personal favorite, Dogecoin, and many others. These were all pieces of the greater decentralization revolution, which you're seeing everywhere. Other entities include YouTube, Craigslist, Uber, Airbnb. All of these institutions are transitioning from centralized, highly controlled systems to new peer-to-peer -peer systems where people make peer-to-peer -peer connections to share their home, decentralizing hotels, to share a ride, Uber is the partial decentralization of rideshare. YouTube as well. Now anyone can become their own broadcast station worldwide. These are all very revolutionary, but they're still fundamentally centralized because they are controlled by giant corporations and they still can... Thank you for the mood lighting. They still collude with governments, so it's still highly centralized power structures running the show. And not everyone realizes yet, but this is the fundamental power of the blockchain. It's not just about currencies. It'll allow us to create decentralized YouTube, decentralized YouTube, decentralized Airbnb. All these institutions can now be reimagined and reformulated as DAOs that will exist outside of these systems and are completely voluntary, completely opt-in, and the power and promise of this is truly infinite. Another big revolution that's happening right now is NFTs, non-fungible tokens. And right now it's primarily geared towards art and collectibles, but the real revolution happening there is any piece of property. It uh, can be either a piece of property, a car, someone's education, Anything can be fractionalized into tiny pieces and collectively owned by a group of people. Anyone, anywhere can invest in any other piece of infrastructure anywhere around the world. So 
one thing people like to say when you're talking about creating free and open societies is who will build the roads, who will build the bridges. Now we can create a road that is based on complete fractionalization owned by the community and maintained by the community and everyone taking responsibility for it. And I believe that this is the key to creating a completely new world. For the first time ever we have these technologies and people who can see what's going on. This is all very exciting and also a very good investment opportunity if you want to get on this train. So this is all very exciting. As Raphael said before me, there's also a dystopian version where <laughs> these open ledger systems, blockchains, as we're seeing in China, can be used to create a social credit system where governments can monitor your bank account everywhere you go, everything you do. So I do believe this is the battle of our generation to build a new free, open, decentralized system before the existing powers create closed and centralized systems where it is no longer possible to do so. There's also other amazing advances happening right now, other decentralized technologies. Solar power is decentralized energy, 3D printing, decentralized production, vertical farming. You can use this solar power. If we could please quiet down in the lobby, thank you. Um, you can use this solar power to create off-grid societies, vertical farming using LED lights, water purification, and you can have autonomous vehicles delivering supplies to you. So it is technically possible right now to tokenize, fractionalize, create a whole new country, crowdfund it, and build a whole new world. None of this is crazy fantasy, and a lot of these projects are underway by a lot of these people within the audience today. So thank you for your service. But, this is not just about the technicals. In order for this to succeed, it needs to be cool and fun, because if it's not fun, it's not sustainable. And everyone knows that the true frequency of the universe is humor and play. Anyone who deviates will pay the ultimate <laughs> price. Which is why, 12 and a half years ago, we began something called the Decentralized Dance Party, right at the dawn of the blockchain in Vancouver. We had an idea to create an open source party, which involves an FM transmitter in a backpack, beams the music out wirelessly to hundreds of party nodes, which are boomboxes tuned into our frequency. Everyone carrying a boombox is a fundamental node in the network. You're not watching some DJ god on a stage. Everyone's on the same level. Everyone has total freedom. Everyone's a fundamental part of the network. And it's an awesome metaphor, I believe, for this whole revolution. And as we were doing these parties, we started in Vancouver, took it all across Canada, all across the states. Everywhere we went, people were having these crazy, amazing, transcendent party experiences, just freely expressing and connecting. And we were like, wow, we've really stumbled across something truly amazing here. Started more deeply researching the history of partying. There's a great book called Dancing in the Streets, A History of Collective Joy. And it talks about how when the colonialists were traveling across the globe, they discovered like all these ancient civilizations had these ancient party rituals where the entire community would come together and have these ecstatic celebrations and that was how they like created these bonds in society and within these communities and we're like wow like this is completely lost and forgotten in our centralized societies everything's about turning a profit it's controlled and it's motivated by profit seeking intentions the spirit has been lost and a huge part of our collective soul has been lost and it's been amazing to be on this voyage with Kyle, Julia, so many other people here, Valencia, Jacques, and experimenting in this realm as this whole decentralization revolution is unfolding. And especially with the advent of Doge in 2013, we discovered that we had a divine figurehead that was inspiring all these same values and ideas, like sending the Jamaican bobsled team to the Olympics, inspiring so much joy and frivolity and community. And the more we did these parties and we put Doge stickers on all the boom boxes and met so many people, and the more we looked at this face, we're like, There's something really special going on here. Like, what is going on with the Doge? Like, why 
<laughs> why does it make people keep acting so silly and have fun together? Like, this is a very powerful figurehead. And we realized at one point, like, Doge spelled backwards is E-God, or Ego-D, Ego-Death, which represents, of course, the death of the ego. And if your ego were to die, you'd probably wear sillier clothes and uh, have more fun in life. So I do believe that these are the key ingredients to building a new world. Decentralized tech, open source, and the deck of the ego as epitomized and embodied by the Doge. And the next phase of the DDP, with the pandemic, we started doing parties on Zoom, having people beaming in all over the world. We realized anyone on the Zoom call could be out in the world with a giant Bluetooth speaker beaming in. And if you had enough of these speakers, you could have a thousand nodes all over the world beamed in, blasting out music to a thousand people. So this is the way to create like a primitive metaverse. In your apartment, you can DJ to a million people, have two-way audio video feeds unifying. And it's been very exciting to see all this metaverse stuff unfold, which also led to the creation of project earlier this year called the Doge Disco, where we dropped animated NFT dancing Doges all over the world and Doge coins and augmented reality, basically a Pokemon Go party game. And I think this is going to be the most powerful platform for unifying humanity. I don't really think that Facebook or whatever creating a centralized like walled garden metaverse is going to work that well. Like, we can have these open canvases for creativity. Someone's waving, I'm not sure why. But very excited about all of these things. And ultimately the point of all this is with open source systems and with the DDP and with the Doge, it's all about intentions. The question is whether your projects will be egocentric, individualistic, or community and collective serving and driven. I heard an interesting quote earlier last year from Michael Pollan where he said, the opposite of ego is spirituality, which paired really well with another quote spoken by a luminary within our community who said, decentralization is the shift from ego systems to ecosystems. So if, egos, if the opposite of ego is spirituality, and decentralization is this transition, then decentralization is spirituality at scale. And tribalism as well is collective ego. The Doge represents a face. It's not any sort of maximalist coin or enterprise. This represents, I believe, a face and a spirit that we can all rally behind and overcome this tribalism and this ego that is standing in the way of this revolution. One final thought is that the DDP, much like Burning Man, these are both celebrations of individual self-expression, not group identity, not tribalism, and I think that this is the key to everything. Individual self-expression, not seeing each other in terms of groups or any sort of category. And this is also at the same time unfolding along with the psychedelic renaissance, which for many people has helped dissolve the ego, dissolve tribalism, and it's a very exciting time to be alive. It is all coming together. One final quote from a good friend of mine, caveat, is, where some people believe that we can achieve great change by altering the logistics of how we use technology and apply government policy, Burning Man posits that we can fundamentally change our condition by better expressing our humanity. So I think that is the key to everything, fully expressing our humanity, which is the only barrier to love and connection. The Doge has helped to inspire that within me and within many others. And I know in my heart that it is possible to build a new world based on love. Are you with me? Yes. yes. So, an immense thank you for joining us today and devoting yourselves to building a brighter future. One question may remain, why the Doge and what can be learned 
from this rare and beautiful teacher. Some years ago, within our local Decentralite community, it was ascertained that the Doge spelled backwards is EGOD, and that this was much, much more than a meme. Many have remarked on the divinity of this creature and the perfection of its pose, that the Doge is, in fact, the modern Mona Lisa, an incarnate <laughs> divine teacher, the Buddha assuming its ultimate form. Within this community, we hold these truths to be self-evident. The time for debate has passed. What have we learned from this divine avatar, this perfect expression of beauty and beneficence? The Doge teaches us that silliness is next to godliness, that the true frequency of the universe is humor and play, and that love can and will conquer all. This revolution is not about competition. It's not about negative vibes. It's about creating a culture that will incentivize and inspire everyone involved to live according to their own light. To express their deepest truths, embrace their divine programming, and catalyze the deepest connections possible. <laughs> to cast off the shackles of a culture designed to strip us of our individuality and render us fearful and divided. To actualize Doge consciousness in the hearts and minds of as many as possible. Imagine this face on every unit of the world's currency, on giant military parades that are no longer military parades, a technology that has been repurposed specifically for partying for waging peace and uniting the entire world in celebration. When I gaze into those eyes, there is no doubt in my mind that it's all within our reach. I truly hope that you feel the same. The Doge teaches us that tribalism and animosity must stop, that this revolution must be built on love and trust, that the new world must not mirror the old. This is an acceptance movement, not a resistance. A clarion call for all who know in their hearts that this world is not right and it's time to make a permanent change. And it can be said with absolute certainty that as long as we're having fun, not taking ourselves too seriously, and dancing and laughing along, that we absolutely cannot fail. These are the teachings of the Doge. So we hosted a DDP last night. We may host another one tonight. We may host another one tomorrow. My son Jock, right there, everywhere he goes, he has a giant speaker, constantly partying, constantly elevating the vibe. So we hope to party with all of you this week. Thank you for being here. Thank you for devoting your lives and time to the open source revolution. Thank you. Guys, we were going to do something, but we're going to do it after because BKFC needs to do their sound checks. So we've got about 30 minutes until the weigh-in uh, activities take place. Thank you, everybody, for your patience, for your love. Thank you, Gary, for that incredible speech. Big shout out to all the people from BKFC. I hope you have enjoyed the talks about crypto. We have wallets and Dogecoin for all of you. So, welcome. Welcome to the revolution. We are radically inclusive, and we are going to change the world by turning this dystopic pyramid upside down.